Hi, welcome to another episode of Bad Wagon's recent record reviews. In this episode, we'll be talking about records that are recent. What? Anyway, we'll be talking about two albums today, two full-length albums actually. Uh, both A's, double A's, but whether or not they're A's in our books, you'll find tune out later. Find out. Yeah, they're tuned in really loud, but uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we'll be talking in. about two albums which are vastly different. The first up, we have Adele's 25. And we have Arca's Mutant. Yep. So we're going to go with Arca first. He's here. Take it away. Sure. Um, Arca uh, is also known as Alejandro Garcia. I hope I didn't mangle your name. I'm sorry. Uh, he is a Venezuelan producer, uh, mixing engineer and DJ based out of London right now. He is probably best known as the producer of uh, FKA Twix's work, Kanye West's, West's? Kanye, West's. Kanye, the works of Kanye West. And also the works of uh, who am I missing? Bjork. Bjork. Yeah. yeah. So he he's been involved in like three very very big albums in the past mm. three years, and his sound is very experimental. It's uh, not trapped by any sort of musical traditionalism. Yeah. Uh, and even as as a even when he's produ- producing established talents like you know those pop stars, mm-hmm. he he's willing to go way out there. Yeah. Which is I think. Or rather, the pop stars are willing to go way out there with, with him. him. Exactly. Yeah. Which in turn helps. The casual audience um, embrace his sound even more because yeah. it, it is really hard to get into, Definitely. and it's nice to get cool signs from big names like that. Yeah. So, uh, with that being said, uh, mm-hmm. what do you think of the actual album Mutant? Mutant, yeah. yeah. Well, um, for for starters, for me, I've only got into Zen and the mixtape earlier this year. Sure. Uh, it's it's called it's just six and percent. <laughs> you remember the title, yeah. right? Yeah. And then and then and then and yeah. So anyway, like yeah, I was definitely taken aback by his sound. Uh, very claustrophobic, very aggressive. But at the same time, Zen was very melodic. It was very straightforward. I guess like I guess if we were to compare it with like the mixtape, mm-hmm. Zen was definitely more like his first major album, and it definitely shows that it was less of a personal statement and more like him trying to figure out what he wants to do. Yeah. So with that being said, with Newton, it he definitely takes it down a notch. Mm-hmm. Um, he's still just as weird as ever and he definitely tries to make it his most personal statement yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, he definitely likes to tackle topics like, you know, sexuality, body image and you can de- and I, I guess that is definitely amped up by his live performances. So with his album you have to, there are definitely left with a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. So context is everything. He likes to add in a lot of images online. You know, album art would definitely help. The actual album art is very grotesque and a little bit. So uh, his music videos also really help in the mm, appreciation of the song. Yes, of yeah. course. So I, I guess like when you're talking about how sing- singularly unique he is, I def- it, his work brings to mind One Tricks One Ever, mm-hmm. who we reviewed last week, uh, the week before last actually. But yeah, um, there is definitely a cross section between the music in the sense where. I can tell they like to use artifacts to create all these sound collages, but whereas One of Tricks has this outside looking in point of view, Arka loves to embrace whatever he does and he definitely likes to make personal statements, which I felt that was why he was a good fit for Bjork's album this year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which was definitely her most emotional and personal statement yet. Yeah. So with that being said, I think Mutant is definitely a very enjoyable album. Uh definitely takes a while to understand. But with the more ambient parts of the album, I guess that could open up to more people. And I, I think, I think what surprised me the most was the fact that there is still no one else in this album. It's just him. Yeah. Because with the fact that he's collaborated with so many big names, I would think that he would start doing the whole featuring this, featuring mm. that. I was, I was expecting FKA Twix to pop ah, up yeah. because she starts with a big name. And and she would probably be the biggest, most suitable name For to sure. to collaborate him on his album. But if anything. He is still striving out there to be recognized for his own works, right? And just trying to be a producer. Yeah. And I think that's definitely admirable. Um, what do you think? Um, I think, to echo Dan's sentiments, I think this is a hyper-personal album. Uh, whereas uh, a singer-songwriter would probably just outwardly tell you what he means, or he or, he or she means. Yeah. Uh, Arca's kind of like mutated palette of sounds mm-hmm. uh, gives you the tools to project yourself onto the track. Yeah. Which is really, really interesting. Um, I think, uh, pardon my language, uh, Faggot is my favourite track mm. of the of the album. It's uh, one of the most arresting tracks. It's uh, just over three minutes long and it, it Arca sort of drags you by the collar through yeah. a lot of haunting soundscapes. Uh, and it sounds like that that, that really grabbed me. Um, and it's definitely very telling of him as an artist as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, um, I think in the hands of a lesser producer, this kind of chaos would be... 
uh, all over the place. But mm. in the hands of Aka, it's like it's organized chaos. Yeah. It's exactly what he wants to project, mm. and uh, and I get every sentiment that he's yeah. trying to express. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's definitely in control with what he's doing, and despite all these disparate elements he tries to melt together, I think he definitely creates a cohesive album. It's just. I would say, if anything, Newton is definitely less cohesive than Zen. Oh, way less. Yeah. Yeah. With it, which is, I guess, like it, it took me a while before I could appreciate Newton. But at the same time, Zen is still more enjoyable for me. Yeah, I know. It feels so claustrophobic and violent. It's yes. almost like intentionally off-putting. Yeah. Like, I couldn't get comfortable with the album at all. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, until after a few listens. Yeah. Yeah. Like even even as a fan of his work with Kanye, with FKA, with uh, Bjork. Like it, this, this was still even for a veteran of Arca, still a bit hard to get into. Mm-hmm. But once I did get into it, it was it, it was supremely enjoyable. Yeah. So what yeah. would you rate it? I would rate it a seven point five out of ten. Seven point five. Yeah. Actually, same. Seven point five for me as well. Yeah. Uh. So we we really really enjoyed this album. Please check it out. The next record we'll be talking about is Adele's 25. Uh, most of you may know Adele. Um, she's a English singer and she is currently on XL Recordings, which. Probably makes her one of the few pop stars still in an indie, la- indie, indie label. Indie, indie label, yeah. But anyway, yeah, um, she has been making a mark on the pop world for a long time now, especially with her singles in 2011, mm-hmm. Rolling in the Deep, Chasing Pavements. She has been one of the most singularly unique singer-songwriters in a long time, due to the fact that she's been able to carry herself vocally and... I guess lyrically as well. For sure. Yeah. So with the new album twenty five, I guess she carries on the tradition pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, would you like to give me your thoughts first? Sure. Um, twenty five, as many of you may know, is one of the best selling albums of this year. It in fact recently broke a uh, Sync's Bye 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 record, yeah. which is super surprising considering this was promoted by an indie label. Mm-hmm. So uh, and considering you... that we're in a post CD age as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So uh, and for her to talk Taylor Swift, amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. The big question on many people's minds when 25 was released is how on earth are you ever going to top 21? Uh, the short answer was she couldn't. Uh, 21 was the most overt and unapologetic breakup record yeah. ever. Uh, and it changed the cultural zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. In, zeitgeist. Zeitgeist. Yeah. In, in much of the way that like Michael Jackson's thriller or Nirvana's Nevermind did. Like, it was, it was yeah. that influential. So she didn't try to top it. She took four years off. Mm-hmm. Uh, she took uh, like a bunch of new experiences yeah. and made songs out of that. She basically went back to zero and just wanted to become a, like a human being again. Yeah. So in that way, it's quite it's quite remarkable considering that people at her at her at her level yeah. can easily be blinded by fame exactly and can write about that. But for her, she just wanted to experience being some just a nobody again. I know. And then get those experiences and then write another great pop record. Yeah, th- yeah. this wasn't Bieber's purpose. This was uh, yeah. entirely authentic. Uh, mm-hmm. She met someone new. She had a baby. Mm-hmm. She lived a life and yeah. she wrote about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, where twenty one was the sound of a woman soldiering through um, yeah. a lot of pain. Twenty five finds her like very queenly, very resolute, mm-hmm. very uh, stately. Uh, yeah. She she's lamenting on on her past songs and a lot of the songs like uh, with titles like Water Under the Bridge, When We Were Young, and even Hello. Yeah. Those are all goodbye songs. Those are all like mm-hmm. uh, those are all like waving goodbye to a past life. Yeah. They all have a nostalgic mood which uh, fits perfectly for an artist. That uh, reaches back decades with her influences. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, you you basically talk about her and her stature as a performer, sure. and I guess to an extent an artist. But I guess like to me right now, what I have a problem with the album is in its context in the current pop uh, state of pop. Sure. Is the fact that production wise, she she never really took any risk other than the fact that she made a sound fuller and bigger. Mm-hmm. But this is basically still Adele with the pompous strings and the swelling pianos and just the overall studio sheen to her album so mm-hmm. to me I guess I, I, I kind of had a problem with it because it has a time to sound but it doesn't feel of its time right now right. like the fact that 2015 we've seen a lot of pop stars who are overly concerned with production we've had u- unique albums by Taylor Swift Justin Bieber Carly Rae Jepsen especially mm-hmm. so just to hear something so traditional sounding as 25 was quite off-putting to be honest right okay. yeah and I guess like for her as an artist I, I can definitely respect that she has carved herself the niche oh, I wouldn't say like a niche in fact like she's so popular but she has definitely carved herself that that stature of being someone who is so unapologetic and personal sure. but I guess to me that is it about her 
right, and right. artistically, instrumentally, there's nothing much else to her. Uh, I never, I never really considered that when I was listening to the album. Mm. Uh, but now that you mention it, like even I, I would understand like she has producers like Bruno Mars, yeah, there, uh, uh, Max, Martin so. Max Martin as well, Max Martin, which are all super traditional. Yeah. Uh, but even the Danger Mouse produced mm-hmm. uh, song, which is River Lea, yeah. which uh, that that's also fairly traditional. But at the same time, uh, I take what you're saying, but I also feel like this album is a more mature representation of what she's presented mm. before. Uh, she has remarkable control of her voice. Yeah. Um, she's she's probably like the best pop singer out there, oh, just, for sure. just in terms <laughs> yeah. technically. But there is a deeper sense of artistic command with this. Mm. It isn't just her voice because that in itself can get boring. Right. Uh, where she flourishes is in the songwriting and the authenticity that she brings with it. Uh, she can sing marvelously, of, yeah. of course, but it's far more rare to find someone as authentic in her delivery as yeah. she is. Uh, she's one of those rare artists in the modern landscape that gives herself away in her music uh, very um, very freely. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it isn't a crafted narrative, and mm-hmm. I, keep, I keep coming back to Weaver's purpose, it isn't a crafted narrative like yeah. this. We should yeah. appreciated mm-hmm. it a lot more than maybe you did. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, you're talking about Bieber or Adele? Uh, Adele. This Adele, yeah. Album. I, I mean, it, in fact, like what you, what you're talking about her as an, as an artist, and what she's writing about, I can definitely appreciate that. Uh, it does feel like a logical step up from Twenty One, mm-hmm. uh, instead of just hopping on the same themes and obviously pandering to like the market who obviously loved, uh, someone like you. Yeah. But yeah, I guess I, I just. I guess like with the other problems that have come out, and I just expected more. Mm-hmm. But I guess there is nothing inherently wrong with a traditional album mm-hmm. so I guess it was just wasn't living up to an expectation of maybe a, an artistically more advanced album yeah, yeah. I, I came into it like knowing it's an Adele record yeah. so I mean I guess I got an Adele record right. <laughs> the, the, and the peak version of an Adele too so right. I, I think that's where I, I take out of it mm. so um, what would you read to them? this is this is hmm, this is tough yeah. this, this is 7 out of 10 for me Seven. I'll give it a six out of ten. Sure. Uh, I actually still do enjoy it, uh, but I guess it'll probably I'll probably take a while for me to warm up. Yeah. To it. Uh, but at this point, yeah, I guess like the instrumentation could have been better for me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think overall it's still an Adele record, like you said, and an Adele record is always strongly written. And uh, that being said, I'm still looking forward to the next Adele record. Let's just hope it's not 28 or 30. <laughs> like I I want it to come sooner. Or 45. Or 45, <laughs> which would be really interesting. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyways, uh, we enjoyed 25, and uh, this is a really good record. Uh, me and Dan have different opinions about it, but we both, I think, overall I think we still enjoyed fairly it. enjoyed it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's definitely worth your time. Please check it out. And that is it we got for recent record reviews. If you have any other records you'd like us to, re- to review, please let us know on the comment section below. Don't forget to, to subscribe, and yeah, thank you for watching. Peace.